Welcome to this episode of Talking About Rock. I'm Rob Edwards, bringing you music interviews from around the globe, sponsored by School of Rock in Rochester and Buffalo, New York. There they have the most revolutionary music school in the world. From young children to adults, they have a program for you. You can sign up for a free trial lesson on their website and start rocking your future today. Here you can listen to all our previous interviews always. They're always available wherever you get your podcasts on all the streaming platforms. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Follow us on our social media at Talking About Rock. On today's episode, we have the British melodic rock band Nitrate. Formed in 2015 in Nottingham, England by bass player Nick Hogg, Nitrate is a melodic AOR rock band heavily inspired by late 80s rock scene. Nick and Alex are here to chat with us about their upcoming release of their fourth studio album, Feel the Heat, set for Friday, the 13th of October from Frontier Records. Next up, Nick and Alex from Nitrate on Talking About Rock. All right, we now have with us Nick and Alex from Nitrate. How's it going, guys? Hi, yeah. Uh, how you doing? How you doing, Rob? Good, good. So I've been listening to the preview of the new album, Feel the Heat, and which to me is is a great follow up to 2021's Renegade. I don't know, Nick. Nick, what did you, what were your thoughts about putting this together? Uh, it's just a follow on from the last one. Uh, We've got a new sound, I think, from the first two albums, and that's where we want to sort of take this this band m- more into the AOR, perhaps than before. Um, it's got a good '80s nostalgia with it, and we've capitalised on the sort of cyberpunk futuristic artwork, and we've rolled rolled with that again. Yeah, that was very, very cool. So let's let's go back a little bit. So going back to 2018 yeah. for the real world, you brought in Rob Wild to get the project yeah. started up and to do some songwriting. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, it was... Um, I was friends with uh, a band called Vega, which Tom and James were members of. Um, and I was looking for someone to, to write some songs with, and it was just more of a hobby. Um, and uh, they got me in touch with Rob, who was living in Nottingham as well. And we started, we went to, to, into the studio and started writing some songs together. So it was just, it was a bit of fun more so to start with. Um, the style of the first couple of songs was probably what was current at the time and then i think on the third song we wrote um it had a bit of a deaf leopard feel to it and we both are, are massive sort of 80s hair metal fans and deaf leopard fans and from then on we started writing some more songs but we gave it that that feel that sort of 80s nostalgic feel excellent um yeah, so it started off as, you know, something that we were just doing for a bit of fun and the songs just kept coming. And I sent it out to a couple of record labels when it was done and we got signed by Melodic Rock Records. And uh, at the time, Rob was starting up Midnight City. Uh, so he was the original original vocalist on so we decided that I'll get another vocalist in and I was a massive fan of Zinatra um, and I contacted via Facebook Josh Menon um, from Zinatra and he agreed to be the vocalist and Real World was born Um, continued writing with Rob for Open Wide we went very hair metal with that album um, right and you had some personnel changes on that one too right you kind of mixed it up a little bit yeah like you're saying you had uh, the, you added a new singer i think too right yeah phil lindstrand um from sweden 
he uh, took over the vocals. Uh, as I was friends with Vega, Marcus, um, the guitarist from Vega, did the solos. Uh, Pete mixed it again, Pete Nudeck, and Rob did the rhythm guitars, and, and I did the bass for that. Um, so it was more of a project to start with. So I think until Renegade came along, it, it became more of a band. Right. Well, you that were getting uh, some best of year accolades just for for open wide, but then yeah, when yeah. when Renegade came out, it was definitely definitely a, a a big breakthrough for you guys as well. You did a lot of great I think, stuff I with that. I think the album sold out of print, right? Yeah, I think Renegade. Uh, yeah, it did. Was the game changer, wasn't it, Nick? Really? Yeah, definitely. And um, so Tom and James came aboard, uh, helped produce the album um did a lot of the songwriting with me uh rob was still on board and did a few of the songs off that track oh sorry off that record um and yeah we just changed direction completely um looking at more bands such as fm um a bit of rock set very deaf Hep sorry deaf leopard in influenced um you know and we went more of a journey uh survivor roots on that album right um, and, and i think that's is that when you came on board alex for 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 that album as well for renegade i was slightly towards the end of everything really renegade had kind of been released and was work we were working um me and nick had started uh kind of talking a lot more and Nick was very like Nick had seen a lot of the work that I'd done with other bands and and with some of my own projects and was very very interested like and and really was kind of like trying to coax me on board. He was like <laughs> he was trying was to like, talk talk you yeah, into it. Like, you were busy or <laughs> well, he knew I did a lot of artwork and I was doing some lyric videos for a band and stuff like that. And he was like, "Well, would you do some for us?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course." And you know, so we started out that way, and he was like, "Would you do?" And I think I the first thing I did for you was a lyric video for Renegade, wasn't it? I think. And yeah. and a few t-shirt designs and a few things like that, and we got working together, and it it was just we were just instantly good mates. <laughs> so it just became like, and then he was like, "Do you want to come and do some drums in the studio and see what happens?" And I'm just like, "Ah, oh, yeah, go on then." And one thing kind of led to another, and now now we're inseparable, unfortunately. So, so, well, you, so you, you did the guess. artwork also for renegade is that correct no i didn't so the okay. renegade as i say came on after it had been released so okay. the artwork was done by nello uh wasn't it nick i think it was yeah. and then i kind of took over um i kind of took over at the end of like renegade i did a few other bits and pieces like videos and things for them and then once that campaign was kind of done that was when i started on the feel the heat campaign really yeah it it did a lot of the visuals towards the back end such as the big city lights video bought the t-shirts for it or the posters for it so um nello did the cover but then alex sort of took it on and did all the visuals from then onwards if that made sense yeah. got it got to understand yeah so Nick, I believe you're usually the primary songwriter, usually, but you brought in some other folks uh, to help you out in this one, including uh, Bob Mitchell, the co-writer of Cheap Tricks, The Flame, for this album. Tell us about working with him. And um, that's it's it's a shame Tom and James on Tom because they'll be able to tell you that story. Um, it was those two that wrote with Bob Mitchell. Um, so the songwriting process is I send over my ideas to Tom and James, or it could be Rob Wilde. He wrote a couple on there as well. Um, and they demo them up and then we go on and work from there. Um, Tom and James brought a few songs to the table for this album. Uh, so four of the tracks were songs by Tom and James, three of them Tom and James wrote. And then the fourth, uh, the Bob Mitchell song was a song that they had written with him a number of years ago. And originally, I think it was um, one for a Vega album that was, wasn't was used. Okay. Um, I think and I was... I was out for a few drinks with them in uh, uh, York 
and they, they were playing me old songs which I hadn't heard before. And in the first 30 seconds, it was like, what's that? Uh, <laughs> I want it. I want that one. <laughs> yeah, right. that, that's how it was. Um, so they'd done a lot of writing around that time. Um, and what I was doing is I was picking up on the songs, a few of the songs, which I thought that would make a great Night Train track. It's, it's the same in the same ballpark, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And some great tracks for sure. We want to take a quick break here. We're going to check out one of the tracks in the video for all the right moves. And we'll be right back here with Nick and Alex on Talking About Rock. Okay, we're back here on Talk About Rock with the guys from Nitrate. So uh, you guys, you talked about this a little earlier, Nick. You guys are really influenced by, you know, you mentioned Def Leppard, 
uh, I think you have said on interviews, Europe, Journey, Bon Jovi, any, any talk or anything about any maybe collaboration with any of these guys or anything going on in the future? Any, any hints of anything happening with any of those? I mean, Journey is on your label, right? It is, yes. Um, <laughs> obviously, that would be a, a bit of a bucket list. Um, we did one of, I mean, I'm I'm a huge Paul Lane fan. Um, you know, I think everything he does, you know, I've got. Uh, so it was a big bucket list moment for me when he did the backing vocals to uh, All the Right Moves, Hurricane and Big Time as well. Um, so yeah, it you know, I'm up for collaborations, I'm up for people appearing on our records, so yeah, because you never know now, you get people featuring on stuff all the time popping up here and there. So I just figured I'd throw that out, Jeff. If you had maybe something you maybe talking about, we'd love to hear about first on talking about rock, so yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So back to you, Alex, a little bit. We talked a little bit about the artwork a little bit. And you don't just do artwork for Nitrate. You're working with some other brands also doing artwork as well. You were telling me about, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit of an all-rounder. So I do a bit of everything. So we do videos and logos and um, uh, artwork for bands, for labels and stuff like that. So, yeah, I've got a few things on the uh, few things on the go at the moment um a uh, couple of frontiers releases i just did the as nick mentioned before tom and vague uh, tom and uh james who were in vega uh we've just done the latest vega release as well battle lines which is also on frontiers <laughs> right so it all very very friendly and pally pally and we're all good mates and we all just tend to help each other out really i think is more more often than not so um yeah, loving it, to be honest, at the moment, doing lots of artwork. Very cool, very cool. It's always good to have folks you can collaborate. Right in the house, it makes things a lot simpler, too, for sure, for sure. So another thing I like to ask musicians all the time, because some people don't hear this, is like, do you have any preferred gear or setup or effects you use or things like that? Nick, do you have anything that you, you have a go-to bass or go-to amps, or do you kind of check out the new technologies coming out or... Yeah, um, I'm lucky to be endorsed by Sandberg for the bass. So I've got a couple of Sandberg basses. Nice. If you can see that. I think I have one right here. <laughs> yeah. So um, bass-wise, there's that. I play Charvel guitars. Uh, Rich, um, the lead guitarist, one of the lead guitarists in the group, plays Charvel as well. So we're big Charvel fans. Um, oh, Alex, drums. Yeah, I was uh, going to ask uh, Alex, you up next. <laughs> what's what's your go to drum setup and and cymbals? Uh, cymbals are are debate a lot of times. I know in drummers. I know everyone does this. They either go, they either say, "Oh, is it Sabian or Zildjian?" It's right, Zildjian. right. That's the debate. <laughs> it's, it's definitely Zildjian. Um, I, I mean, again, you know, I was lucky enough to to have endorsement with with Pearl. Um, I actually haven't been in touch with them for a while, so I better get in touch. But um, yeah, Pearl, Pearl and Zildjian for me are my go-tos. Although, you know, there's there's no right or wrong in this industry for the record or for, for whatever we're doing. I, you know, I've got a really nice Ludwig snare that I use, you know, and um, I actually use DW pedals. So there's a few little bits and pieces that, you know, you just go to different brands for different, spices right. and right Folk, yeah i've noticed musicians have said that sometimes they'll 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 experiment with a little bit in the studio maybe you want a little bit of a different sound or something so you might try a little something different in there or set up yeah. something a little differently for sure yeah for last sure. record i did i think we tried out like like six or seven different snares just to just to get the right one and then we'll probably end up triggering it anyway right so <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> we just got to think you, you know but yeah, like there's loads. I mean, there's so much gear out there to use now. There's so many different choices that you've got. It's, you know, but it is, it's integral to the sound. It's integral to what you get. And, you know, I mean, yeah. the, the new record is just, it just sounds absolutely fabulous. It does. It does. The production job was great on it. It really, really captured that, that 80s, you know, AOR feel that you wanted to capture. I think you guys did a, did a great job for that, for sure. It's, uh, it was actually Tom and Jay James's first mix as well. 
Oh, really? So, uh, so it went from mix to master pretty pretty quickly. They, um, yeah. So it was it was the first time that they had actually mixed an album. So you know you've got to give them credit for the sound that they produce. You know, first off, it is just incredible. They they I mean they've got a lot of years of experience. So like in in one way, you know, they've been kind of ramping up to this for for for, for many years and have absolutely massive experience with studio engineers and producers with Vega and and with all the other stuff that they've done and the co-writes that they've done. But yeah, that that it was it was absolutely stunning the way they just focusedly pinpointed the exact sound that they were after and just got it down. And like you say, it did go from, I remember like the mixes were coming in and I was just like, these are just incredible. And then it was almost like, yeah, well, it's mastered now it's done. Yeah. I mean, no... Usually that takes like a couple months, usually at least. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and that's a fast track usually. Yeah. And they, and they were fabulous. They just, but they knew what they knew in their mind, what they wanted. And like, and that was, right down nick's road if you get what i mean it was right in the pocket of what nick wanted i think exactly. if i'm right in saying that nick yeah definitely i mean the sound we've got now i mean you've you've got to put down you know it's tom tom and james have created that sound don't get me wrong it's it's something that i've been striving for and i've gave a little bit of guidance i want this i want that but you know hats hats off to them for creating it that's why yeah. there's a shift between album two and album three even though they didn't mix album three the demos that were coming in and the quality of the demos and the way the songs were structured was all down to tom and james mm. it, yeah. it's definitely you know their 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 producer that that producer element that they bought in has made renegade and feel the heat just just like top shelf in that way so yeah we're we you know we're really looking yeah def definitely a very distinctive sound definitely stands out very cool so can't wait to check it out so you folks out there you can check out feel the heat from nitrate it's going to be out friday the 13th of october 2023 from frontier records and we want to thank uh nick and alex for being with us to here today and talk about rock. thank you so much guys for stopping in and chatting with us thanks a lot take care all right thank you so much See you